In this presentation, we are going to discuss problem number 3 on block diagram reduction. So, let's get started. The block diagram of a system is shown in the below figure. A block diagram representation is given in the problem. If the desired transfer function of the system is Cs over Rs equal to S over S squared plus S plus 2, then Gs is. We are given four options and we need to select one out of them. This problem was asked in Gate Electrical 2014 given by IIT Kharagpur. It is a conceptual and good problem, so I want you all to pause this video, take your time and try this problem on your own. And if you are able to do it, let me know in the comment section. I hope you are done. So moving on to the solution. If you observe this block diagram representation, we are given three blocks in the forward path. The gain of first block is 1 over s. The gain of second block is gs. And the gain of third block is equal to s. There are two adders. The first adder is a two input adder. And the second adder is a three input adder. There is a takeoff point which is taken from the output of the block S and it is given as an input to this adder. And there is one more takeoff point which is taken from the output of the block GS and it is given as an input to these two adders. The reference input is RS and the final output is CS. And according to the problem, the overall transfer function CS over RS is equal to S over S squared plus S plus 2. And using this transfer function, we need to find out the value of gs. So firstly, using this block diagram representation, we will find the overall transfer function, which will be in the form of gs. And then after that, we will compare this with the given transfer function in order to find out the value of gs. Moreover, in this problem, it is not necessary to find out the overall transfer function by using the block diagram reduction method. So we will solve this problem by using two methods. The method number one will be block diagram reduction and method number two will be the shortcut method. So now we will solve this problem by using method number one that is the block diagram reduction. So I want you all to observe this block diagram representation carefully and think from where we can start the problem. Observe this takeoff point and think if we shift this takeoff point to the right of this block then these two blocks will come in series and we can multiply the gains of these two blocks. So our step number one will be shifting of this takeoff point to the right of this block and we know that if we shift this takeoff point to the right of this block then we need to divide the gain of this block with the gain of this takeoff point. And we can see that the gain of this takeoff point is unity. So if we divide the gain of this block with this takeoff point, we need to add a block of gain 1 over s with this takeoff point. Let us check this out in step number 1 in which we will shift the takeoff point to the right of block s. And if we do this, the block diagram representation will look like this. See, we have shifted this takeoff point to the right of block having gain s. And due to this, we need to multiply a block of gain 1 over s with this takeoff point. And now the output of this takeoff point is given as an input to these two adders. Now observe this block diagram representation and think what can be the next step. Yes, this block having gain gs and this block having gain s are now in series and we can multiply their gains. Moreover, if you observe this takeoff point having gain 1 over s is behaving as a negative feedback for these two adders. So if we split this takeoff point, we will have two negative feedbacks having gain 1 over s. The first one will be given to this adder and the second one will be given to this adder. Let us check this out in step number 2. Moving on to step number 2 in which we will multiply the gains of blocks in series and split the negative feedback. And if we do this, the block diagram representation will look like this. See, we have multiplied the gains of blocks and it is now S multiplied with GS and we have splitted the two negative feedbacks. The first negative feedback of gain 1 over S is given to this adder and the second negative feedback having gain 1 over S is given to this adder. Now, observe this block diagram representation and think what can be the next step. 
if you observe this block having gain 1 over s which is connected between this takeoff point and this adder and this branch having unity gain which is also connected between this takeoff point and this adder. So we can say that this block having gain 1 over s and this unity gain branch are connected in parallel and we can add the gains of these two. So if we add the gains of these two, we will have the overall gain equal to 1 plus 1 over s. And since both these are connected with a negative polarity, the overall gain will also be connected with a negative polarity with this adder. Let us check this out in step number 3, in which we will add the gains of blocks in parallel. And if we add the gain of this block with this unity gain branch, the block diagram representation will look like this. See, the resultant combination is having the gain 1 plus 1 over s and it is connected with this adder with a negative polarity. Now observe this block diagram representation and think what can be the next step. Yes, we can see that these two blocks are forming a closed loop system having a negative feedback in which the forward path gain is s multiplied with gs and the feedback path gain is 1 plus 1 over s. And we can convert this into a single block by using the closed loop transfer function. So our step number 4 will be solving the negative feedback. Moving on to step number 4 which is solving the negative feedback. And if we solve the negative feedback, the block diagram representation will look like this. See, we have converted this into a single block and the gain of this block is s multiplied with gs over 1 plus gs multiplied with s plus 1. The forward path gain of closed loop system was s multiplied with gs and the feedback path gain was 1 plus 1 over s. So if we calculate the closed loop transfer function by using the formula gs over 1 plus gs hs, we will have this gain. Now, we can clearly see that this block having gain 1 over s and this block are connected in series, so we can multiply the gains of these two blocks. Moreover, this complete system is a closed loop system having negative feedback. So we can solve this by using the closed loop transfer function gs over 1 plus gs hs, where gs will be this forward path gain and hs will be this feedback path gain which is equal to 1 over s. So firstly, if we multiply the gains of these two blocks, then in that case, this s in the denominator and this s in the numerator will get cancelled and the forward path gain will be gs over 1 plus gs multiplied with s plus 1 and the feedback path gain will be 1 over s. So if we want to calculate the overall closed loop transfer function, then it will be cs over rs equal to gs over 1 plus gs multiplied with s plus 1 over 1 plus gs over 1 plus gs multiplied with s plus 1 multiplied with 1 over s. We have applied the formula gs over 1 plus gs hs. Now, if we take the LCM in the denominator, we will have CS over RS equal to GS over 1 plus GS multiplied with S plus 1 over S multiplied with 1 plus GS multiplied with S plus 1 plus GS over S multiplied with 1 plus GS multiplied with S plus 1. I hope you got this. We have just taken the LCM in the denominator. Now, we can see that this term in the denominator 1 plus gs multiplied with s plus 1 and this term will get cancelled and this s will come in the numerator and we will have cs over rs equal to s multiplied with gs over s multiplied with 1 plus gs multiplied with s plus 1 plus gs. So this is the overall transfer function that we have calculated by using block diagram reduction. Now, according to the problem, the desired transfer function is cs over rs equal to s over s squared plus s plus 2. This is the overall transfer function of the block diagram representation according to the problem. And this is the overall transfer function that we have calculated by the use of block diagram reduction. So, we can equate this overall transfer function with this transfer function in order to calculate the value of gs. 
So we can write s multiplied with gs over s multiplied with 1 plus gs multiplied with s plus 1 plus gs equal to s over s squared plus s plus 2. This is the overall transfer function which is given in the problem and this is the overall transfer function that we have calculated just now. Now if we compare this, s in the left hand side and s in the right hand side will get cancelled and if we cross multiply, we will have gs multiplied with s squared plus s plus 2 equal to s plus s squared plus s multiplied with gs plus g of s. Now, if we take gs common from these two terms, we will have gs multiplied with s squared plus s plus 2 equal to s plus gs multiplied with s squared plus s plus 1. And now, if we transpose this term to the left hand side, we will have gs equal to s. And this is the answer to the problem. So, we can say that option B is the correct answer. In this way, we have solved this problem by using method number 1, which is block diagram reduction method. Firstly, we calculated the overall transfer function of the block diagram representation by using the block diagram reduction rules and then after that, we compared this with the given transfer function in order to find out the value of gs. And now, we will solve this problem with method number 2, which is the shortcut method. Now moving on to method number 2 which is the shortcut method. So this is the block diagram representation which is given in the problem. And now we will not apply the block diagram reduction rules. We will just observe this block diagram representation. We can see that there are 3 blocks in the forward path having gain 1 over s, gs and s. There are 2 adders in which one of the adders is a 2 input adder and the second adder is a 3 input adder. There is a takeoff point which is present in this branch and the output of this takeoff point is given as an input to this 3 input adder and there is one more takeoff point which is present in this branch and the output of this takeoff point is given as an input to these two adders. Now in method number 2, we try to focus on the output of takeoff point. Like in this case, the output of takeoff point is C, which is given to this adder. But in this case, the output of takeoff point is not known. The output of this takeoff point is the output of this block having gain gs. But right now, we do not know the output of this block. And that's why we do not know the output of this takeoff point. So let us assume that the output of this takeoff point is x. As this output is given as an input to this adder, so we can say that the input to this adder is equal to x. In the same way, the output of this takeoff point is given to this adder also. And that's why the input to this adder will also be equal to x. Now if we observe this adder, one of the inputs of this adder is r and the second input is x with a negative polarity. And that's why the output of this adder will be r minus x. Now the output of this adder is given as an input to this block. And we know that if we want to calculate the output of this block, we need to multiply the gain of this block with this input. So the output of this block will be equal to r over s minus x over s. We just multiplied this gain 1 over s with this input. And now the output of this block is now the input of this adder. The second input to this block is x and the third input is the output from this takeoff point. And what is the output from this takeoff point? Yes, it is equal to c. And that is why the third input to this adder will be equal to c. We can see that this input x is having a negative polarity and this input c is also having a negative polarity. And that's why if we calculate the output of this adder, we will have r over s minus x over s minus of x minus c. This is the output of this adder. And now this output is given as an input to this block having gain gs. And if we want to calculate the output of this block, we need to multiply the gain of this block with this input. But we have assumed the output of this block equal to x. So we can say that if we multiply the gain of this block gs with this input, 
then it will be equal to x. Moreover, this x is the input of this block having gain s and the output of this block is c. So we can say that s equal to c over x because s is the transfer function and it is equal to the ratio of Laplace transform of output to that of Laplace transform of input. So we can write s equal to cs over xs. For simplicity, we have written c over x. From this equation, we can find out the value of x which is equal to c over s. I hope that everything is clear till now. In this method, firstly we assumed the output of this takeoff point equal to x and with the help of this output, we calculated the gain of each branch. Now, we know that the output of 3 input adder, that is the output of this 3 input adder is r over s minus x over s minus of x minus c and we also know that x is equal to c over s. So if we replace x with c over s, we will have the output of this 3 input adder equal to r over s minus c over s squared minus c over s minus c. And this is the input of this block gs, whose output is equal to x. So we can write x equal to r over s minus c over s squared minus c over s minus of c multiplied with g. As we discussed before, if we want to calculate the output of this block, we need to multiply the gain of this block with this input. And we already know the output of this block is equal to x. That is what we have assumed initially. And that is what we have written here. The output of block gs is equal to x and it will be equal to the gain of block which is equal to g multiplied with the input. Now, the value of x is equal to c over s. So, if we solve this, we will have c over s equal to g multiplied with r over s minus of g multiplied with c over s squared minus of g multiplied with c over s minus of g multiplied with c. If we transpose these three factors to the left hand side and take c as common, we will have c multiplied with 1 over s plus g over s squared plus g over s plus g equal to g multiplied with r over s. Now, if we take the LCM in the left hand side, we will have c multiplied with s plus g plus g multiplied with s squared plus g multiplied with s over s squared equal to g multiplied with r over s. This s in the denominator in the right hand side and one of this s in the left hand side will get cancelled and if we transpose r to the left hand side we will have c over r equal to s multiplied with g over s plus g plus g multiplied with s squared plus g multiplied with s. If we take g common from these factors in the denominator we will have the transfer function c over r equal to s multiplied with g over s plus g multiplied with s squared plus s plus 1. And this is the transfer function that we have calculated by the use of shortcut method. Now, according to the given problem, the desired transfer function is c over r equal to s over s squared plus s plus 2. So, this is the overall transfer function of this block diagram representation. And this is the transfer function that we have calculated by the use of shortcut method. So both these equations represent the overall transfer function of this block diagram representation. And that's why we can equate these two equations. And if we equate this equation, we will have s multiplied with g over s plus g multiplied with s squared plus s plus 1 equal to s over s squared plus s plus 2. This is the desired transfer function which is given in the problem and this is the calculated overall transfer function. Now, we can solve this equation in order to find out the value of g. We can see that this s in the left hand side and this s in the right hand side will get cancelled and if we cross multiply, we will have gs equal to s. And this is the answer to the problem that we have already calculated by the use of block diagram reduction method. 
So I hope you got this. I'll recommend you all to go through this problem one more time. We will discuss some more problems based on block diagram reduction in the upcoming lecture. As of now, we are done with this lecture. Thank you for watching this lecture. I'll end this one here. See you in the next lecture.